Welcome to Tutango's webinar, Accelerating the Impact of Customer Success in the Enterprise, featuring our customer trust pilot. We are excited and honored to have Brian Merritt, VP of Customer Success at Trust Pilot, joining us today. From Tutango, instead of Guy, we're thrilled to have our VP of Pada, Ravi Danino, presenting with Brian. The format of this webinar is going to be very conversational, with Ravi asking Brian several questions about his CS operation. Ravi, would you like to kick us off? Yes. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, Brian, and thank you for being part of this uh, webinar. Thank you for joining me discussing uh, uh, Spark. Um, My pleasure. I th thank you. I think the best way to start will be to get some more details from you about Trustpilot and maybe around your CS initiative. I think this will help us. Uh, this will help us make sure that the team understand uh, what what task Trustpilot is actually driving and how do you manage your customer success organization. Sounds great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, and 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 thanks for the opportunity here. Um, so uh, just a little little brief intro about Trustpilot. Um, while we're not a household name in the U.S., uh, we are we are a household name in Europe. Um, Trustpilot is is the leading online reviews community for um, you know businesses and consumers uh, to find each other and make each other better. Uh, um, you know our, our our ethos is be seen, be heard, be better. So from the consumer journey perspective, we offer a, an open platform that is free for all to, to look up companies, to inquire about companies, to find out more information about companies, and to read, most importantly, um, other consumers' reviews of that company. How do they operate? How do they, they, they work with you? What kind of service do they provide? Um, from a business perspective, we offer the ability to, to you know, automatically invite your consumers, your customers, to leave a review on Trustpilot, that then provides you deeper insight to how your business is operating based on the reviews your consumers are leaving. And then there are further analytics that, that we offer that give you deeper dives into sentiment analysis around those reviews, what areas of your business need more, more improvement and the like. So it's, it's a circular relationship. We help businesses get better through consumers' feedback and we help consumers find better businesses. A little bit about um, Trust pilot by the numbers here. Uh, we're just over 10 years old now, so we're not, we're kind of a, a tween, if you will. Um, we are global. We've got seven offices around the world from Copenhagen, London, New York, Denver, Melbourne, and, and Vilnius. Um, and I think some of these numbers speak for themselves. We have uh, monthly over 3 billion brand impressions through Google and search and widgets, um, over, over 43 million reviews growing by a million per month. Um, and we're acquiring 700,000 new reviewers every month, which is pretty exciting. And, uh, and as you can see, we have over 220,000 websites worldwide who have been reviewed on Trustpilot. Um, you know, as, as I think about, you know, who our customers are, um, it, it's really, we really run the gamut across retail, uh, financial, and services. Um, you know, I'm proud to say, you know, We've got some great logos on here, but our customer base ranges from, from global conglomerates like Western Union um, all the way to Captain Jack's Seafood Locker, some of the best lionfish caught salmon you'll ever find out of Alaska. So um, really, there is no business that can't benefit from feedback and from consumer reviews. Um, so we've got a pretty, pretty truly global, diverse customer success team, as you can see, as a global company. Um, we have customer success in, in all six offices around the globe. And a, and a fairly large team, we've got roughly 80 members uh, comprised of you know, success managers, onboarding specialists, integration engineers, and then some folks with deeper knowledge. Um, as a global company, we have challenges around uh, languages and currencies because we service so many different uh, countries. Um, from, a, from a paying perspective, while well, we have 220,000 customers using our free product, we have over 15,000 customers paying uh, subscription fees. We're a SaaS platform, so it's very easy for companies to sign up and start using us. Um, and we run roughly $50 million in annual recurring revenue across our team members. Uh, we, of course, have you know, strategic uh, success managers and more of our 
subscription success managers, but a typical SMB success manager will have about 150 accounts and roughly $800,000 in annual revenue. Um, we've been using Tatango for, for almost three years now. And really we've been leveraging a lot of uh, two, two key pieces. You know, we are heavy users of the automation to scale. It's simply not possible for us to continue our 30, 40% year over year growth with headcount hires. We need technology and tools um, to help us scale our processes, which Tango supported. And uh, given the size of our customer base, we've heavily leveraged the campaigns tool. We send roughly 70,000 emails a month out of, out of Tango. Uh, thank you, Brian. So um, when I hear you describing the um, the journey that you went with uh, within Trustpilot and the journey that your customer success team had and the development that you had in the last few years, it definitely sounds like a very um, long way. You managed to come up with a group that is very um, relatively very big, uh, around 80 customer success managers. Uh, each one of them driving a big amount of accounts, each one of them uh, driving a big portion of revenue. And it's definitely very um, promising. Now, I know the way wasn't uh, very easy. Like if I'm looking on, on this journey right now, the one that I'm presenting, it's a journey of customer success that you look at the result of it at the end. But at the end of the day, what when I did a lot of drill downs with uh, specifically you at Trustpilot and with some other companies we had, um, I'm learning that the best way to run customer success is not to look on it as one monolithic journey in which you manage and um, manage and measure your results only at the end. It's better to look on it with few stages. Each one of them uh, deliver and prove its value. Each one of them deliver results that can be proved to the business internally, uh, that can make you as a customer success organization more successful and manage the whole process in steps as opposed to look on a very long journey for customer success, making sure that you with your customers will have successful uh, success and successful results along the way. Um, can you tell us a little bit maybe on how did you drive customer success and what is the journey uh, your comp customers are having within uh, Trustpilot? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Was, that, that's a great point. You know, when, when I think back to where we were um, a couple of years ago before we started applying technology and scale to, to our tools, you know, it was very much, you know, hey, what, why is your retention number this month so bad? Um, as I like to say to my, to my team members, the success of a renewal is, is not your efforts on the last day of the month in offering discounting. It's your efforts the prior 11 months in keeping that customer engaged and happy. Um, and, you know, as we matured as an organization, my executives started looking, you know, started listening to that message saying it isn't about what happens in the month of April. It's about what's happening the prior 11 months. And that's really when we started shifting towards the results-based um, mm -hmm. steps that you're speaking to, Ravi. Um you know, within here, we've got kind of our five, you know, our four or five key stages, you know, onboarding is critical. If a customer doesn't adopt your product, it's really hard to renew them later on or even get their interest three, six months post, post contract. Um, so we focus heavily on the onboarding and the adoption um, sections of, of, of those, uh, of, that, of those initial engagements. Obviously throughout the way there are escalations, but we, but if we're doing our job and onboarding and adoption, escalations are small, which is why it's, probably proportionally represented correctly here. Um, you, know, you know, securing the renewal is obviously important and that's a, that's a function of the work we did with the adoption, onboarding and escalation phases. And then the expansion piece, that, that's something that happens, you know, while it's at the end of the, the journey here, it's happening throughout the journey as customers are satisfied, um, you know, expansion can happen at any place. So I think you're right there. So then, yeah. So when we speak, you know, some of our some of our goals, you know, onboarding time is, is critical. Uh, you know, as uh, as my VP of Sales likes to say, it takes us a hundred conversations to get a deal closed. Um, so let's let's make sure we strike while they're excited. So getting a customer live uh, is important. Getting them to adopt, you know, seven to ten of our modules is pretty important. Um, as they you know as they adopt different modules, um, they they find more and more ROI in our product. Um, 
from an escalation perspective, you know, we, we've set a standard of, of in-week re resolutions that resulted in a four-day turnaround time um, for anything that gets escalated up either, you know, to uh, like most organizations, we've got a number of teams, right? Success managers, support teams, we have, you know, compliance and QNC, you may have, you know, accounts receivable, et cetera, whatever that escalation looks like, we aim to resolve it within four days. Um, and then the results, you know, hopefully end up speaking for themselves. We where we have a 91% base retention rate. That's our annual goal, and that, that is never, no one's ever asked me to make that smaller. <laughs> they won't ever ask me to make it bigger. Um, and same thing with, with an expansion and an annual occurring revenue. So, so you know, from a total retention rate, we're, 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 we're getting close to 100%. Those numbers are definitely um, very, uh, are very impressive. Thank you, but it, it it's it hasn't it hasn't happened without the you know without the results of technology, um, you know you know I, there's no way to track my onboarding time if I don't know you know our goal is to have an account live within 72 hours, you know I, I need uh, you know on uh, you know the onboarding time to be tracked and managed, um, you know again the product usage and understanding which accounts are being used is, is critical, you know and as we skip over renewals those with red health in 90 days out you know giving us that forward looking visibility through technology. And, and the, the goal-oriented result of, of having the renewal happen. Um, and then also in quarter expansion, seeing what we can do this month to, to, to this month, this quarter to help our annual targets. Um, obviously there, you know, there are a lot of goals here, but, but there's, there are definitely, um, you know, some challenges facing Facing us, uh, you know, as I said, we've got a, a global team of 80 folks across six offices. Um, some markets much more mature. When in Denmark, where we were founded, we've got 85% market share. In the U.S., um, you know, we've only been here two or three, four, four years, so you know, we're still relatively new. So, driving uniformity across a global team is is, is critical. Um, ensuring new best practices are rolled out and followed. So, as our as our product team comes up with a new product, we got to make sure that's 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 adopted. As we discover better ways to work with our customers, we've got to make sure that that's adopted. And you know, we're still kind of still a startup slash scale up. So you know, the, the company's mission. Well, you know, we're always going to be a reviews platform. We're not going to suddenly become a streaming music service tomorrow. Uh, you know, the company goals continue to evolve as we better understand how we fit in the marketplace. Um, so you know, you know, my advice to to, to other enterprises. I, I hope these challenges sound familiar. Um, but you know, you know leveraging a, a success platform to get results—that's what this is about. At the end of the day, for us, um, you know, integrating your customer data, your you know, from your CRM and, and especially product usage, it, it's so important to know what your customers are doing and what they're doing, so you can set up the right kinds of action-oriented, results-focused, goal-driven outcomes. Um, and then, you know, I I still report up to folks that so I've got to have dashboards and reports to show the macro trends. Um, but at the same time, I've got team managers and team leads and directors who need to monitor and track individual CSM performance. So, so technology is really the only way to do that. And um, the Excel spreadsheet doesn't work anymore. Awesome. Thank you, uh, thank you, Brian. And uh, following what we learned from Trustpilot in the last, um, I guess, few years working together, and following other uh, studies that we had with other companies uh, in the enterprise and SMB space, we learned that this is the biggest challenge um, of managing customer success and bringing customers to um, uh, a great result and. Uh, successful renewal and expansion rate. Um, and this is where we decided that this is the right way to look on customer success. And for that, we are launching today to Tango Spark, which will enable you to get to your results faster. To Tango Spark is the fastest way to resolve uh, for a CS team and to make sure that the CS team actually achieve uh, impact and manage to communicate this impact uh, in the company. Uh, the, the way to Tango Spark is working is we have defined um, a new unit into Tango called Success Block. The Tango Spark is modular, and each success block can be measurable. It's very easy to implement. It has best practice 
factors associated with it, and it's very scalable. Imagine that you're taking your customer journey and you're splitting it to multiple success blocks. So you can see here, for example, on the left side in the menu, the Tango menu that I believe most of you are familiar with, you can see the success block, the different success blocks that are uh, coming as part of Spark. Those success blocks can be very different to each organization, but each success block, each success block sorry, represent a piece of the journey for a customer. For example, onboarding, adoption, nurture, risk. I'm sure those areas are very familiar for each one of you. You have those steps within your customer journey. And the main thing to understand is, how do I measure those success blocks? How can I make sure that I have a very clear set of goals and KPIs for each one of those success blocks? How can I make sure that I will see very easily where am I in each one of those success blocks? Part of the work that we did in the last um, few months was to analyze the different success blocks that the industry has. Um, and the list that you can see over here right now is the list of success block or um, steps in the journey that we saw our customers having. Uh, you can see that uh, top of the list, the first two success blocks that you can see over here are onboarding and escalation, which most of us are using. We, need, we have a new customer, we need to onboard a customer, we need to make sure that a customer understand how to use the product, how to leverage it, how to be successful with that, and then escalations are something that happens um, along the journey, and we want to make sure that we are uh, drilling down with. If I'm going back to the um, dashboard that I have for each one of the success blocks, I can tell, um, can we please go one slide back? Thanks. Um, I can see that in Tango, I have right now a new dashboard for each one of the success blocks. You can see that each dashboard uh, introduce a set of goals. Some of them are coming out of the box with the Tango, and obviously you will be able to configure your own goals if the ones we came up with are not suitable for your environment. Each one of those goals will have a set of KPIs to be measured on. So in this example for onboarding, I the first thing that I want to ensure is onboarding on time, very similar to what Brian talked about before. And I can see that the average days to onboarding in my organization is 37 days, where the target that the management team had put in place is 40, which means I'm in a good place. I managed to finish onboarding for my customers on time. I can also see on the right side here the days to onboard, the trend for onboarding in the last few months. All of this data is data that is gathered automatically from Tatango. So you have all the data already in the product, but we want to make sure that you will be able to analyze it and to measure it in order to drive a successful engagement with your customers for each one of the processes. Now, if I'm looking on onboarding here, I can see that I have multiple areas of data that I can look at. I have the dashboard, which gives me a pretty good example and understanding of where am I with my onboarding efforts in the company. But I have also other areas around segments that can present me which audience is actually taking part of the onboarding. And uh, far to the, lay, to the right, I have success plays and campaigns to demonstrate my engagement with customers. How do I engage with them? What is the communication that I'm sending them? And what are the best practices that the company have um, uh, drive me to do on each one of them? As I mentioned before, one of the other things that you will see here on the left menu is some more data around the executive console, the ability to understand the team performance and how the team is actually driving success for each one of those success blocks. Can we please move forward? So we talked about the success blocks and how those are um, usually been implemented uh, in all of our customers and which success block do we see as prominent uh, in most of the customer base. Uh, Brian, can you please tell us a little bit on how do you drive it, what are the journey stages that you see in Trustpilot, and how do you measure those? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you're, you're spot on with, with, with the success blocks and, and you know, our 
you know, the, the chart you had earlier with the, the different, um, you know, success blocks, we have a lot of onboarding and a lot of escalation and a lot of adoption. Um, what we're looking at here is, is some, some macro reporting that I look at um, from my team. And, and you can see up top, kind of the top half is, is the variety of, of success blocks that we use, um, you know, with, with as, as the chart predicted, you know, outreach is, is the biggest one. There were 92 activities yesterday around outreach. Um, but then, then adoption uh, down below with, with about 30 is, is the second. And that correlates the graph so I can see my trend over the past 30 days and what that looks like. Um, so as you look through, you know, of course, you know, outreach, just gener gen general account outreach and um, adoption are, are key metrics there. And as you'll notice, there's, you know, if you look kind of to the left, there's kind of a, the, the first block there is kind of a big purple spike that happens to coincide with month end, quarter end. My, as my sales team started closing deals, my adoption efforts drove significantly and have stayed high since then as we've been driving adoption for our new customers. Um, but then I can see, you know, if, you know, if there's a blip in anything else, you know, I, I you know, from, from just a quick visual perspective, we've done a very good job with escalations. They've been very low. Um, but if that were to start to creep up, it would be very noticeable in, the, in this graph because of the, the difference between outreach and, and adoption versus some of the other areas. This is something my, I look at on a regular basis and my managers are expected to look at on a daily basis. And then if we look at actual team performance, this is where, um, you know, I, I can really work closely with my teams and understand exactly what they're working on, how they're working through. And as we go down down the, the, the kind of graph there, of course, there's lots of outreach, but I can see that we're doing some, some of the third one down there, KPI stakeholder outreach, which is great and, and kind of expected as, again, we just wrapped up a very uh, productive March and productive Q1. So we're, we're working, success managers now working with um, stakeholders. No doubt the one right below that with the dollar sign is, yeah, we've got to make sure that those customers are, are making some payments too. Um, as my boss likes to say, our CFO likes to say, we, while we're review, we are a reviews company, uh, no one will take their salary in reviews. They'll only take it in money. <laughs> so, so we got to make sure that we're doing our job to, to make sure that bookings turn into revenue. And this, this is really, I think really the power of the success blocks is that again, we talked about the macro level. How do I understand a team-wide, um, you know, kind of global? So the, the the charts and graphs were kind of global. What are what are my overall teams doing? The last slide was really about what our particular teams doing, and then this is where my individual managers and team leads can focus on on specific folks. So as we look here, uh, my dear friend Kelsey, you know, she is she is an she's a success manager, as expected. She's got uh, a lot of outreach going on there with the handshake. Uh, the puzzle piece is, is adoption. So she's driving adoption of her accounts, which is the, the behavior I want to see from her. Um, you know, I'd like to see, uh, you know, a little less need to talk about money, but that's always part of the conversation. Um, and she's doing some good job with upsells. Whereas um, if we look at the kind of the, towards the bottom half of the screen, um, Andrew is one of my integration managers makes sense that almost all of his tasks are the rocket ship, which is our, which is our logo for, for adoption, for onboarding. Uh, if I were to see him, you know, having a lot of escalations or other activities in there, that would be concerning. Um, so my manager can use this to make sure that their team members are working towards the right goals for their role. Great. Awesome. So it definitely seems like, um, what you're doing in Trustpilot uh, will will be very um, suitable to the work we're doing with Spark, and we definitely drive customers and want to, um, I guess, encourage customers to look on customer success as different success blocks, looking on the different customers' uh, journey steps that they are taking. Make sure each one of them will be uh, very, very specific to a specific part of the journey. You will have some goals to each one of them. And by that, you'll be able to move very fast. You'll measure what you're doing. You'll see if you meet the goal or not. If you are not meeting the goal for your onboarding, for example, you will be able very quickly to adjust the process to make sure that you are meeting the goal. The other value that Spark will give you is the ability 
difficulty to see that the team is focusing on the right success blocks. The team is actually doing whatever you had them or whatever you want them to focus on. By doing those things, you will be able uh, to move faster with your customer success organization, drive a bigger impact with your company and with your customers. And this is the thing all of us are being requested to do as part of a, a, as a main goal of our job. We need to drive impact with our customers base. We need to make sure that our customers are getting to a quick result, good results, with, which will prove that we are as a CS team making sure that they will drive the success and eventually increasing the ROI that um, every customer is getting from the product. Um, with that, I want to thank you, Brian, for sharing with us what uh, Trustpilot is doing and how you drive your customer success organization. And I'll return the um, session to Catherine. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let's start the Q&A. If you haven't already, please submit your question in the question tab on the GoToWebinar Council. Um, I'll just give everybody a minute. Okay, question for Rivi. You show 40 blocks. Do we need to use them all? What if we only need a few now and one more later? So definitely not. Uh, 40 blocks was um, a data that was gathered from many customers we worked with. So definitely not. The number of success blocks is very different from one company to another. Um, I actually believe we'll see many customers that has between five to seven success block. And this is something that can grow with, with time. So you can define at the beginning few success blocks that you would like to implement in the company. And then once you'll figure out that you want to add additional one, uh, additional success block, you can add them uh, later on. So the number of success block is not limited and you will be able to adjust the number as you go with your customer, as you progress with your customer success um, organization. I don't believe 40 is the right number. I actually think 40 is a very big number and again it represents um, a data that was gathered from many customers we have. I believe the uh, average number will be much smaller. Yeah and I think just to add to that you know as we were as we were playing around and working through the beta uh, and things like that we, we got really ambitious and, and probably set up more than we needed to um, you know, there are only so many ways you can kind of, you know, slice an apple before it gets too thin. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, without, without a doubt, I, I, I'd, I'd echo your statement. I, I'd be surprised just having gone through it ourselves. Um, and I'm not sure that we're at the right level at about uh, 13 or 14, but, uh, you know, we're trying to compress that and see where there's redundancy or, or where there, where there's opportunity to get better information in our business. Great. Uh, next question is for Brian. Brian, how do you communicate your goal and performance to the executive team and the board member? And then back to your team? Well, uh, you know, I'd like to say I communicate vaguely to my executive team and board members, but, um, you know, through the through the power of, of, of Tatango and, and the success blocks, you know, obviously the, the, the financial results speak for themselves, but the, the, um, the health score, the success blocks, and the, the dashboards that we have do make it to our board presentations and it gives them the insight that we are, you know, taking what we believe to be the right actions and activities at a macro level to drive better business results. And, you know, so when we have a, a challenging month or a challenging quarter, there's usually a correlation to, to, to the success block activity. Um, whereas if we have a lot of activity, you know, we've, we've got a board meeting next week that we're preparing for, we're showing them lots of activity, which is reinforcing our our beliefs in terms of our overperformance for Q2 and Q3. Um, so we, we definitely use this as both leading and lagging indicators to the board about why, what happened and what's going to happen. Um, from a team perspective, it's part of my monthly management meeting with, with my directors and managers and part of their weekly meetings uh, with their, their teams. And then they, they leverage um, these, these success blocks uh, in their one-on-ones. So it really does cascade from the board to the junior success manager. Great. Brian, while we're on the topic, there's another question coming in of uh, how do you structure your large team across the stages? 
And do you comprehend them differently based on each stage's unique goal? Yeah, without without a doubt, um, you know, we've got, um, you know, the, you know, different success manager, you know, skill sets for different size companies and, and different products that they're on. So, of course, we've got our strategic folks that deal with our largest, uh, heaviest user enterprise customers. And then we've got some, you know, junior, newer folks learning how to be a success manager dealing with some of our subscription customers. Um, and then... So that's from the, the, the success management up and down the teams, but across uh, the results that we're focusing on, we have integration managers who focus on getting customers set up quickly, and then integration engineers who work on the larger, more complex uh, customers. And we absolutely do compensate them differently. Um, you know, success managers are compensated on both a base and an upsell percentage. Um, you know, from our perspective, as we're you know a larger company with some with Backing, you know, we're fortunate to be at a place where we're managing revenue, not chasing revenue. Um, the difference being is I need a high base retention number, as you can see, the 91% to prove the valuation for the hopefully the exit down the road. Um, so, you know, my success managers are compensated, you know, heavily on retaining the base and, um, you know, accelerators around the upsells, whereas uh, my integration managers are integrated, are compensated on time to live. And we take snapshots of, you know, what customers are doing in our product, you know, three weeks post contract signature and six weeks post contract signature. And, and based on the results and the, you know, the goals that have been achieved, um, we can, that, you know, we do have a compensation model for integration managers that, that pays them better if they get the customer on board faster. Um, but again, we use the success blocks to pinpoint issues with specific integration managers or across the team if we start if we start tripping up so it, so it's both the uh, you know there's a compensation aspect to it but you know compensation is a lagging indicator of performance generally it's it's what are you doing today what are your activities today that are helping you support your goals for tomorrow thank you uh, back to Rivi. can spark work for non SaaS companies Yes, definitely. Spark is the next generation customer success center um, that Tango will deliver the same way Tango works today for non SaaS companies. Spark will deliver the exact same value and the exact same behavior. So the answer is definitely yes. Uh, last question for Rivi What makes Spark the fastest CS solution? So I'll actually start with uh, referring to what Brian said a uh, few minutes ago in his answer. He talked about the fact that they have defined different success block and once they learn and see that the specific success block is either not tuned, not functioned correctly, or doesn't meet his goal, doesn't meet the company goal, sorry, they're changing something within the success block flow. This is exactly the way we are looking on Spark by the fact that you're taking the CS journey, uh, the customer journey, and breaking that to multiple success blocks. Each one of them can prove its own value. Each one of them can is goal-based, and each one of them can be measured uh, separately. You can very quickly understand where do you need to focus, what are you doing right in each one of those success blocks, and maybe what are the things that you should improve a little bit. And lastly, how to drive impact for each one of those success blocks and prove it in the company. So by those specific things, by being able to pinpoint all these uh, values for each one of the success block, you can drive your customer success organization much faster. You can make sure that you are focusing on the results and you can make sure that eventually you're driving the right impact for the company. Great. Thank you, Ravi, and thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you, everyone else, for attending. If you would like to learn more about either Tutango or Trustpilot, please reference the information that we will send out in the slide. Have a wonderful day, and thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.